All right. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another Bucks on Deck episode. I'm Anthony Murphy, and always, as always, with me, my co-host, Nola Jeffy. Nola, what's going on, man? How's it going? Not too bad. Long weekend. I'm a little tired, but, you know, pushing through. Yeah. yeah. Anything exciting happening over, over the weekend for you? Oh, you know, played in uh, a Houston hockey tournament, made it to the chip, and uh, lost 5-3. So, okay. anything exciting happened during that game? Oh yeah, there's a there's a brawl at the end. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, guy. Uh, the, the guy was going a little extra hard on the other team with uh like no time left. Put put mm-hmm. one of our guys into the boards for no reason, and then uh-huh. just. Woof. Let's go. I, I kind of glided over there, and I was like, Nah, I'm good. <laughs> It, 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 too bad, too bad. It'd be fun to see a, a good old fashioned goalie fight there. I, might have, I mean, for a second, I, I saw him gliding out on the other end, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm like, I gotta drive back on Monday and go to work on Tuesday. I'm good. It's beer league. <laughs> it's beer league. I don't, I don't need to, I don't need any fist to cuffs in beer league. You made a so basically, you made a business decision there. Pretty much, yeah. You know. You, you, you know <laughs> Some reason there's guys still in beer league that think they're gonna make the show that there's uh, scouts in the stands or something. It's like no, you're you're just gonna wake up the next morning in pain and go to your day job like the rest of us. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so I, I did a I did a cookout today, and I was left alone to assemble the new grill, which was fun. Mm-hmm. It didn't get 100% assembled because I got I got sick of doing it. I got it enough to where it wasn't tipping over barely, and like we kind of just like planted it into the ground. Um, <laughs> so I get I guess um like we just needed something cheap because we went out there and it was easier to do that than just buy a, or than try to drag ours out there. Um, so but you definitely get what you pay for with with the with with grills. <laughs> And yeah. we didn't pay much for it, so yeah, we, we got the full experience of the uh, it not being very good. We, we left early. It wouldn't surprise me if we went back there and it was just still sitting there because I don't think anyone <laughs> was. Uh, everyone, no one was volunteering to take take it with them. Yeah. So I guess the park just got a free grill. So someone will so find it handy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. What, what absolutely. one of those instances like a printer where uh, it's easier just to buy a new printer than new ink? Basically. Basically, I also it also gave me a little bit of, of time to scout my next uh, my next the new grill that I that I'm looking at getting. So came came out got, ahead there. I got I got to start looking looking those up. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're working with the gas grill, and I've always just done like charcoal for the majority of my life. So I, I want to go back to to charcoal grill. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Saw so, saw so a really nice one. On there. So speaking, speaking of hot this week. Yeah, speaking of hot, what do you know? The pirates can actually hit. And better yet, the pirates minor leaguers are starting to hit. Yeah. So very and especially, I mean, especially maybe get some reinforcements. Triple A is really, really hot. Granted, one of those innings, they put up a 10 spot and it was a it was a hit hitter pitching the entire time. But hey, you know. Yeah, but that that was like two weeks ago. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what was it? Has it been that long ago? Yeah, because it. Well, I mean, I gotta be honest. I wasn't paying as uh, attention as intently this past week, you know, because I was a little consumed with uh, hockey. But uh, yeah, the the that ten spot was against the Mud Hens, so that that was a couple series oh, yeah, ago. That, so. that is true. That is true. Wow, time flies. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, just in general, it seems like the off- like things are really clicking in um, Indy right now. Matt Gorski uh, hitting really well. Henry Davis hitting really well. Um, yeah. So, I, have you know? I know. I know you said you haven't watched like much over the weekend and all that. But from what you what you've seen, um, who do you feel like like maybe hitting? Why? Maybe we could do like a little bit of a rundown of the entire system of some guys that's kind of stood mm-hmm. out like offensively. I know like pitching is a big thing and. Pitching usually ties up a lot of our time here and ties up a lot of the time uh, uh, when I talk to the guys on NS9. And I mean, it's for obvious reasons, but 
I guess we have a good opportunity now to talk about some of the, the hitting guys. So who, who's someone this past week that's really kind of stood yeah, out? So for I, I guess we could call it the, the Memorial mix up, you know, um, <laughs> I mean, obviously everyone's eyes have been on Henry Davis. Um, so that, that, that one's kind of a given. I mean, he went down and he's destroying the ball, murdering it. And, uh, but obviously, um, a name that was a pretty popular one a couple of years ago. Matt Gorski's really turning it around, and um, I think I think these numbers actually include today. I think they're updated on the MILB site. But uh, he, in the last week, last seven days, seven games, he has a one point two three zero OPS, and I think they noted because I, I was watching the game earlier to uh, this evening, Monday evening, and. Uh, he he hit a shot, and they said it was his seventh home run in twelve games. And I know um, I've been kind of talk, even talking with like Connor on the side because uh, we're, we're ever since like spring training, we've been kind of talking about that weird leg kick he does. And that's where I, I started noticing it a couple weeks ago. It seems like it, it was, a lot of his struggles were just since it was a brand new like timing mechanism for him. He was trying to get the timing down for it. And also in a couple of weeks ago, it almost like it's like it, it just clicked. And all of a sudden he's just skyrocketed since then. And he's not walking a lot. Still some swing and miss, but he's his K percentage is dropping. Um it, he's hitting fastballs, mid nineties, high nineties, he's hitting breakers. Um again, there's still a little bit of swing and miss, but it's it's not like like we were just saying it's not like you blasted off on a position player and that was yeah. it like he's he's hitting everything right now mm-hmm. yeah he he's he's been no stranger to these kind of stretches i remember I was in greensboro a couple years ago i think it was like he hit like 10 home runs in in like a, a one week series or or something or like close to that and i was, it was like, some right ridiculous he like yeah home. yeah he, he was just, it was just insane um but he's he's a guy that's like we've always been like He's one of those guys that like some other people don't like because like they'll they'll look at like the strikeout rate and be like, well, you know, okay, strikeout rate. He's an older dude, but he's he's someone that you like you and I have always talked about and have always like been very interested in just because the we we like the the toolsy guys and and like there, yeah. there's always been like so much raw power there and and like you talk about his swing and and it's like you know that like it's a hundred percent him when he gets a hold of it. Because that swing can get like so funky and 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 everything with right. it, and it's 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 all muscle that he's putting out. There's like no flow, no, like no full body flow that's kind of like sending these right. balls over the park. It's it's all him kind of thing. So that's always well, impressive that's what, to see. No, so yeah, because he's what he's like. What uh, like I mean, I guess I could click on it right, click on it right here. What six four, like two twenty? I want to say. So, 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 he, but, sorry, oh, not as big as <laughs> six two. 198 it says i thought he was bigger than that but yeah no he he looks he looks a lot more built than that what is it um i saw him last year and i sat like in in like the front row behind home plate and that is a massive massive huge and it's it's all more spectacular like because he's i mean like obviously the power things everything that people like gravitate to but like he can move he can move he's back to back 2020 seasons and like he plays like a plus center field out there yeah and that's what we always Um, said is you know you don't i mean you would kind of hope maybe in best case scenario it's more of like a 2023 swinski obviously with less walks but you know you're probably gonna get a high strikeout right high strikeout rate um probably not a great batting average but he's got a lot of pop plus he would play a plus center plus arm but they've been putting him at first base too and that's obviously a position in itself yeah yeah, um, I feel. I feel like I still like looking at it. Like even like you know we we mentioned we've mentioned that like we're working on like our updated like uh, uh prospect rankings for the site. He still didn't make. He he didn't like like breaking news kind of. He he didn't um make my like top thirty on it. Like I don't I don't see. But like he's also a guy who I can see. Like if he like we see him like right now. He he gets hot for a couple of weeks and for a stretch and all that. Like he has the kind of tools and that kind of stuff to where he like he can I can still see a scenario where he comes up and in the majors and has this kind of stretch like long term probably not pro- he's probably not like a fit in in the majors just because of the strikeout mm-hmm. kind of thing, um, 
but he he's a guy that has all the kind of stuff that like if you catch him on the right week, like he he can do some da- damage against some like really good pitchers. I feel like. Yeah, and and you know, I mean, you look at someone like Jiwon Bay, uh, who was crushing AAA, came up and he's struggling, you know, get on base and everything. And the difference is that Gorski again would play a plus center field, whereas G1 Bays can time to time make, you know, rather uh, easier catches, I guess. I don't know what I'm looking for, but it makes, he makes catches look tougher than they should be at times. I I think even uh, Jim uh, was tweeting about one the other day. There was like a 40% catch probability that he had to like dive for. And then he pulled up one that was Michael, a Taylor, a 30% catch probability that he didn't even have to dive for. Yeah. Yeah. He's hit base though at that point to where it's kind of like, it's a hundred percent his speed and athleticism that gets him there, yeah. which I mean, a lot of people can get by with that, that kind of thing, but mm-hmm. yeah, he definitely makes the easy stuff a lot, yeah. look a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. So. But it, I guess, but even moving on from him, the what again, it's only what I think 11 games now. But uh, surprisingly, Matt Frazier has been holding his own so far yeah. in his first taste at AAA. Yeah. Um, I mean, five walks, five Ks. He's got a home run. Uh, he has an OPS over 1,000. Um, I, don't, I don't know what like the other like metrics are in terms of how bad a ball date and everything, but uh, I'm kind of, I was kind of surprised how well. He, he, he had one that he hit like 111 off the bat the other day. Um, yeah, he's like I like I haven't I haven't looked at his stuff like too hard, but I remember putting like the the rundown together one day and his name popped up at the top. I'm like, oh, I'm, like I, yeah. like obviously it's like I've like he's never played it at a at an affiliate to where we've really been able to get that kind of data for. Yeah, on, yeah. On that kind of, um, so like I mean he could have been doing it the whole time, but like that's yeah. like first reading that kind of really jumped out on there. So he's hitting the ball yeah. hard. Make, makes you kind of wonder too, like you know he he'd been in Altoona for so long and. Like, yeah, he probably hadn't done much to warrant the push up, but like maybe mm-hmm. there was some comfort or something that he got here and, and like a nice little push kind of reignited some of what what he had there. It was kind of making me wonder what's going on in uh, the Eastern Link Double A because there's been kind of some like weird numbers down there. And I know it's it's been a very uh, suppressed offensive environment. Mm-hmm. So. But I mean, I, even uh, over the last week, uh, Andres Alvarez, you know, former 2020 guy, um, him and Malcolm Nunez have OPSs over a thousand. So yeah, In- Indy's been teeing off. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good to see those are the guys that are um, knocking on the door to the majors, looking for yeah. looking for that opportunity. So maybe maybe mm-hmm. you know who else has an OPS over a thousand in the last week? Uh oh, who? Sammy Siani. Siani over Let's Hudson go. Head. I mean, I mean, we haven't got to high A yet, which I don't think Head's OPS is that high anyways. So, though, I mean, you want to talk about Greensboro outfielders, though, right now. I don't think there's anyone who's taken advantage of Greensboro more than uh, than PJ Hilson. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, this, this guy, he's 23 years old, has never played, was drafted out of high school, had never played above single A, finally gets to high A, and he has like seven home six five or six or seven home runs since he's been up there. All at all all at a first national bank, all at home. <laughs> yeah, guess what his OPS is over the last uh, week. What what is it? One point four one five. And yeah. just behind him, just behind him, Nick Samillo, one point three three six. And then Sean Ross, 1.256. Because all, all, all Sean Ross does is hit a home run or strike out. Yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah. He hit he hit two on Sunday, I think it was. On a so Sean Ross. Yeah, he's um yeah. he's kind of you know set in very, really well as like the uh depth catcher, I guess, there at at uh, at Greensboro. And yeah. He keeps launching balls like that. I think he'll be perfectly fine with with just launching home runs there. But who is it? That's 
Yeah, yeah it's similar, similar, Nick Samillo, I wrote about him the other day. He's really come on. Like, he started the year on the development list and mm -hmm. took a little bit to kind of get going. But once he's got, now that he's going, he's just mashing, mashing baseballs left and right. And yeah, not, not even striking out. No, yeah, no, yeah, that's a big, big step for him. He's a big guy, and like his swing looked like it was either like really long or like really slow when like when he first came up with like Bradenton, mm -hmm. and like he, you just kind of looked at him like, man, like he's gonna hit some here, but like high, even high age is just gonna eat this guy alive. And it kind of happened a little bit last year. Yeah, yeah but like he's uh, he's made that adjustment so far, so it's good yeah. to see. Good to see, and uh, I mentioned it on the on the. Sh show this morning with ns9 like they uh i know all the fans they they're 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 really desperate for their uh, first base process for some sort of first base prospect so maybe, maybe he didn't have the best week but he had a good enough week to i made sure i kind of threw it out there just as like a teaser thing so, there, there you go there it's it, this is our uh first base prospect podcast you know uh malcolm nunez matt gorski nick Samillo. i mean i mean there's I guess there's a lot of guys down down in the sit, down throughout there. Um, I know Valdez and Eddie Rodriguez didn't have great weeks last week, but they're 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 with watching them in the field. I, I would say that they're trending towards a uh, a first base profile as of right yeah. now. It wasn't. It hasn't been. Um, you talk about uh, making a thirty percent catch probability, or they they make some very easy looking catches very difficult so far yeah. out there in the outfield. So. Yeah, there's so anyone. Anyone else so far? To say I got a paper where I started writing it. I took notes. Oh, you took notes? Oh, I took notes for the show yesterday, or oh. for the show this morning. But but it applies for both. All right, oh, there so you go. okay, who else had a good week? I, was, I mean, batting average wise, not so much. But Solomon McGuire had a 973 OPS. He is showing so much more power than I I was kind of ex expecting from him. What is that? Like I think it's like four home runs he has on the season now. He's a he's, a, he's an interesting guy because he's still he's still what he's still like baseball young or like ex experience wise. Right. He hasn't played much. Yeah, no of he, injuries. Obviously, he has two hundred and thirty-eight career at bats. He he just turned twenty-one in March, so yeah. So but, he's yeah. he's right there. Like it, that would put him like on the tad older side for for single A. Yeah, but like I mean, which and then even in that same regards, uh, Brandon Bishop has been kind of doing a little something something lately. It's start. I think I think with Bishop too, like. I guess for both of them, like the, the biggest thing right now is just like, please let them stay on the field. And what was it? McGuire, McGuire looked like he had left the game early during, during last week too, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Cause uh, what is it? Bishop came in all, all of a sudden. Yeah. So yeah. that, that kind of was worrisome for a second, but he, he's another, another guy. Like, we're so adamant about like let's not get too excited about like lower level hitters, but there are a lot of lower level hitters that you kind of want to maybe get a little excited with. I think. Yeah. That like, I guess maybe they're just taking that. Let's throw a bunch against the wall and hope they stick. But there's enough now this time that you would you would think that maybe one or two of them should stick this time. Or at least you hope so. Yeah. 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 I mean, you never know, kind of thing with it. It could, you know, would, you know, always kind of expect the worst now at this point with it. But I mean, can we say that though? Because like, what? Look what Nick, Nick Gonzalez is doing right now. Aren't they yeah. just all? He's just they fixed him, right? I mean, as of right now, I mean, everything he's doing, it's been a couple weeks now. So, and he's he's answering the questions. Yeah. That we still had, so I mean, as of right now, I'm I'm buying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would, that would be huge. That'd be a big, just I think like an overall big win for like the system in general if they just get Nick Gonzalez going, kind of thing. And especially when you think about the organization as a whole over the however many years with uh, 
second base, middle infield, just in general, how many second basemen we've gone through. Just like, mm-hmm. can we find one competent guy that can stick at second base? We've just been waiting. Yep. Yep. And it'd be the first guy that they kind of set up to do that. Their first, yeah. The first draft pick of the Charrington era. So that'd be, I mean, that's, that'd be a huge step forward. And like, like you mentioned too, you know, they, they start getting some of these hitter prospects to kind of take the right turn and stuff like that. And, you know, people start picking up and stuff like that. More of the hitters should start getting a lot more recognition when it comes to the national kind of stuff too. Once, right. once, once they become like a more proven ground for developing those kind of players, yeah. get the benefit of the doubt with certain people and all that. I guess one more per- one more person I kind of wanted to bring up on there, um, like dropping all the way down to the complex league real quick, and we'll move on to the next thing. I don't know whether maybe I just set the bar so incredibly low for him just because of the reports coming out of the Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> but like in the little bit that I've seen, I have been thoroughly impressed by what I've seen from Tony Blanco Jr. Like it, it – like, like I said, it, it could be a simple case of me setting the bar, like, really low. But, like, he's he's had some really good at-bats. He hit his home run off a, off a slider. He has a couple other hits off, like, breaking pitches. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's, maybe, I mean, the strikeout rate was really high. So, like, there's obviously something there. And, and people who saw him play, like, I, like, noted hey, there's some swing and miss issues kind of stuff. But, like, it hasn't looked bad so far. And and, and it's kind of shown and stuff. I don't know what his number – I don't know if you're able to pull up his numbers real quick, but they're not – What's on? I'm looking at it right now, and, yeah, I mean, it's considering, yeah, everything that was talked about with him with regards to coming stateside, I mean, his – Walk rates up from ten point eight percent to thirteen point three percent, and his K K rate went from thirty seven point six percent, and it's at twenty six point seven percent. And yeah, and a hit a, a four seventy one batting average of balls in play, which probably isn't too crazy considering how hard he hits the ball. No, yeah, he he's definitely some like what is it? Uh, the that one game I was at, and we were talking during during it. It was like just like a ground out to like second or something like that, and it was like one thirteen off the bat. It, well, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and he barely made contact with it. It felt like. Yeah, I think and there was one. Yeah, he like nubbed it. Yeah. To second base, and it was still ninety eight miles an hour. I was like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't think a ball should do that. No, no. So like hit that the power like there is like completely and utterly legit for him. If mm-hmm. he's making better contact than like some of the reports of, were of him when he came stateside, then like we're talking like a whole different kind of prospect thing. He, I mean, he's still a first baseman. Like you could look at the, you could just look at him there, and and like he's not playing, he's not playing the outfield. Hey, this um, is the first base prospect day. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I guess I got to change the title now to it. So, so but yeah, um. Yeah, but he, he's just someone that, like, at, at some point I know I wanted to mention because, like, it's just been completely different than what I expected so far from him. Yeah, um, and I, I feel like getting him stateside and then with the coaches, it's probably I – mean, you're probably just telling him, like, look, you are a behemoth. You don't need to swing as hard as you need to. You need to just make contact, and the ball is going to mm-hmm. pop off the bat. Yeah. Like if you just make contact, it's going one fifteen off the bat. Yeah, that's gonna be that would be that would be so fun just to see him, like him and Cruz going back and forth on on batted balls and stuff like that. Just get those two in like a batting practice session together, or something like that. Yeah, and that would just be fun. So fun. Well, that's a yeah. And what he turned 19, 13 days ago. As of it. This recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, so some hitting stuff going on, and apparently, turns out that they're all first basemen. That was completely yeah. unplanned. That was completely unplanned, <laughs> but it came together perfectly, I guess. Yeah, the impromptu first base pod. So, speaking of first base prospects, 
if we got some in the system now, that means we don't have to use a top 10 pick on them. Because top 10 pick, taking a first baseman in the top 10 almost never works out. So we wanted to go into this now, the College World Series, college tournament, college playoffs, whatever you call it, gonna, getting ready to kick off. Um, obviously, big thing with the, the Pirates, they'll have the ninth overall pick. It's something we've been kind of monitoring like draft eligible players this year quite a bit. Who are some guys going into the tournament that you feel like you are that have piqued your interest? Maybe not necessarily at the ninth pick, um, but just like in general, like early on. Well, I mean, first of all, I know a name that if we want to talk one nine um, outside of the usual prospects usual yeah um suspects usual suspects um i know Tib- tibbs is gaining a lot of steam lately and i've been seeing his name by a, a lot of people now um i know when we did our mock draft i, I had considered slating him for the past but I was, you know he was still ranked in like the 20s i was like ah, it might be too bit of a jump um but going past that um some guys I know, being that you're a pitcher guy, um, and me living in New Orleans, uh, I, I really liked what I saw from Luke Holman and Gage Jump. Um, and you got one guy on the right side, one guy left side. Um, I think the metrics generally fare out pretty well with both of them. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, for a second, third pick, uh, I think those are two great guys to look at. And then um, Peyton Tolley. For TCU, that kid is a horse, man. And I think I could see him moving up. It, he's that kid is a horse. He's mm-hmm. huge, and he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm kind of leaning more toward like. So for me personally, like the idea of taking someone who's like limited to first base, like right off the bat, just doesn't really sound appealing to me. On there, I know. I mean, like, like even someone like Nick Kurtz, who who was one of the top rated guys there on it, and like he's a really good player, but just someone who's just limited in that aspect. To like, if there are still questions about the Pirates' ability to develop hitters and make sure that they reach their full potential, taking someone who is his only contribution is going to be playing first base. Like if you have a first baseman that can't hit, like, I mean, we've seen what we've seen. We've seen that this year with the major league team. Like right. It's, it's it becomes like a black hole of a position kind of thing. Um, and I I think like the next guy next guy there would be like a Jack Caglione, which like the chase rate like translating to the next level would kind of worry me. There's part of me that that believes that like if if he um focuses only on hitting. Maybe that'll kind of help him shore that up. But like right right now, like I'm I'm gonna be watching as much as Florida as much Florida State as I can because like I'm a big I'm a big uh, James Tibbs guy. You know, I'm I'm anyone that's named Cam apparently that like I, I think the Pirates should draft immediately. So you know, Cam Smith was is still a guy that I'm really high on the draft on the draft there. I, I feel like he's someone that like with his arm and stuff like that, like maybe. Maybe if you want to get cute, you could slap him in right field or something like that. I mean, Since, we, we we had to warm you up a little bit on Tibbs. Yeah, yeah, it, it took it took a second too. I saw like the I saw the um, they're talking about like probably mm-hmm. ends up at first base thing, so that kind of worked. But then like the more I saw of him, the more I kind of looked into it and all that. Like I started to buy in a lot more. Of course, if there's mm-hmm. if there's like a pitcher there, like I think one guy I'll be watching is like I'll be watching. Um, Will be like Trey Savage to see like health wise how he's doing to see if he actually pitches and stuff like that. Right. Because right. with the with like the collapsed lung and stuff like that, it'll be interesting if, if he gets in game in games and all that. I guess it, that could scare some teams around and 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 stuff like that. I don't know if that'll how far if he'll that'll drop him. But you mentioned mm-hmm. Luke Holman and like I think I, I can't remember which website that was, but like he was mocked to the Pirates at at, at one point with like the comp pick and and like I think right. we both we both felt like if things felt that landed that way, that would be like the perfect first two picks. 
Well, I, yeah, think, exactly. I think it was the one where think, it had like Weatherhole. It was like Weatherhole and and Holman or something like that. No, I think it was the one that I think it, I want to say it was Montgomery and Holman, and we were like, oh, oh yeah, perfect. yeah, Montgomery and Holman. Perfect. Like, yeah, it was like sign me up for that like all day. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, like for for me specifically, I'll be looking for like like a pitchers like pitchers that maybe they could take with like the comp pick or like the second round pick or something like that. You know, they they've had you know Hunter Bar they've gone with like Hunter Barco and Tom Harrington. They've gotten some guys around mm -hmm. that area. I don't know if I have any specific names yet, but obviously look for pitching. You can never have enough pitching. I like Tibbs probably there. I I don't know. He he he's starting to feel like. That's someone like the who like the Angels might like jump up and snag right before the the, the Pirates take. Like they're gonna take him and then like he'll be their starting left fielder by by September. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. I am who what are the teams? Uh was it Rockies, uh Rockies, Angels, Royals, and uh Athletics. A's, you, yeah, yeah. The, it's like those, those are the four that could really shake up a draft. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it could get it could get really interesting with that. I know. Did uh did Coastal Carolina make make the the tournament? I don't know if you have it pulled oh, up. Oh man. Uh, I know I had it pulled up somewhere. I'd, I'd have to look again. Um. Yeah, let me see. Let's see. I had notes, but I did not have notes for this one. I think I pulled up on my phone, and then I don't know where I put my phone. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to bring up. Um, no, yeah, was they it made it. Coast, that, Coastal make it. Coastal made it. I guess one guy to, to watch that we kind of, I think it was, I don't think the numbers were correct well, on here, yeah. what they said, but but what was it? His name was a uh, Merkley. Meckley? Or Merkley? Meckley. Meckley. I have there. Yeah, Alexander Meckley. He was a transfer student. Like we saw, it was like on Twitter. And what did it say? He had like a 25, 26 uh, inch induced vertical break on one of the fastballs or something like that. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was like the coastal, some like coastal Carolina metric Twitter account. Yeah. That they had like a 97 mile an hour fastball to 26 IVB. And we're like, hmm. And it's like, that can't be. There's no way that's right. Yeah. And so like, obviously, obviously, someone says that and that that, that catches our attention. So I, I, I went and watched him and like, he's not a guy that, you're going to take with like a high pick, but someone like right. middle, like a fifth, six round pick or something like that, mm -hmm. with that kind of fastball. Mm -hmm. It's whether it's 26 or not, like, like it's, it's probably up there with it. And like, and watching it, you could see it had some good life up in the zone and stuff like that. Right. That just, that feels like, like something that the pirates would, would go after at this point. They love their guys with the fastball life up in the zone with the high, yeah. uh, induced vert so he's a guy that i'll, I'll kind of be seeing i i like i'm not sure how the rest of the season kind of unfolded and stuff like that but i feel like he could be a guy that that the pirates could target just because he, it just it just kind of the mold fits kind of thing yeah and that's why another you know because obviously i watch them quite a bit but uh i know we've talked about him in the past um thatcher heard um He's, he doesn't so much have the arm slot that they've sought mm -hmm. uh, lately, but he's kind of that mold of um, bigger stuff. At one point was a starter, but just couldn't like keep things going and eventually yeah. got moved to the bullpen. But, I mean, there are times where I think even last year's College World Series, like there was a point where, I mean, he was just unhittable. Where, I mean, mid – mid 90s 99 5 96 and just a devastating curveball and i think i saw him throw some sliders the other day too like so two you know pretty solid breakers on top of he just couldn't place the fa fastball anywhere so yeah he, he even seems like a perfect you know they love sec pitchers so sec pitchers that have trouble staying in the rotation yeah because of control yeah. issues that would that is <laughs> I mean, outside of Paul Schemes, but like you, yeah, that's they just they love their SEC pitchers, and like I mean, there was a time to where like he he seemed like, especially at the beginning of the season, like he seemed like he was a shoe in for like a first round, like a, to be a first round pick, yeah. and and you know things things happen and and whatnot. So he, yeah, he could be another guy too that you might be able to buy low on, and and you know Pirates pitching factory gets to work and kind of gets them back to. 
what he was kind of expecting because like he he was a guy he was a guy that was like really highly touted out of high school too like they thought he could have gone mm-hmm. super high with that like he started he started at UCLA so that's what I, heard yeah. I know I don't think they made it so there was another guy that was actually I wish I had gotten I didn't get any velo readings on him but there was a was a Merritt Beaker a left-handed pitch okay. out of Ball State. He he was actually kind of interesting, and he you know the arm slot the whole thing. Um, he transferred to Ball State. I think it was from uh, East Carolina, ECU. Um, he was actually pretty intriguing. Um, obviously, you know Mac, lower level, but lower conference, but he was kind of interesting. Um, and then you know outside of pitchers, uh, Anthony Silva for TCU, or Michael Braswell. LSU, a couple shortstops. I, I thought they could be pretty interesting. Um, probably mid, mid, late day two guys. The, mm-hmm. I know Silva was high, higher thought of earlier in the year and then kind of fell down lists. Um, last I looked, he was, let's see. The last updated rankings I have was he's about 93rd. Overall, between three different lists, okay. So I'd probably put him about a third, fourth round pick, but he he made some plays for TCU. He he went up and got a ball. Um, that was just like damn. <laughs> so I think I think I feel like this year there's there's a couple maybe not high upside um, shortstops, but like if you want like a college shortstop that's gonna play shortstop, mm-hmm. there are a couple guys that you can probably get like early middle middle 10 round kind of kind of kind of thing like i like i you know i'm um a lot of times i i, I like my like acc uva virginia kind of guy you know griff griff o'farrell he, he's a really solid short you, you know he's gonna play short and all all that right i, I think i brought him up one time on, on the website and someone immediately just called him kevin newman 2.0 i think that kind of i think that kind of shut a lot of that down that talk down, but um, put the thing on. but like he's always been a guy that just uh, work harder, you know, you know, high effort kind of guys on the field that, and and you know he's going to play shortstop kind of thing mm-hmm. too for it. So I know we've seen um, I know everyone wants O'Neill Cruz to stick at shortstop, but like he's at double digit errors right now. So yeah. maybe you start exploring other options kind of thing. Yeah. He, he's right now. He's kind of at shortstop just because who else are you going to play there kind of deal? Yeah. 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 I think that, that that'll kind of be a fun conversation that they're going to have and stuff like that, that they're going to have to have at some point. Cause I know they, they mm-hmm. pushed it for a little bit and then they abandoned it. Cause I guess he wasn't, responding well to it but um almost in at a almost keeping with the theme of uh first baseman what are your thoughts on um tommy white like as like a not not with the first not with the first pick anymore but uh like if he if he's there around like the comp slash second round pick like how do you how do you feel about it his game translating to the next level right now um is there anything that you can uh, see I'd I'd be him. all for it. I, I'd be all for it. I mean, the dude. I mean, I, they talk about a little bit of swing and miss. He gets a little, you know, swing happy, trying to yeah. murder baseballs. Um, granted, they're probably a little biased. Um, the announcers during the games, but I even have to say so myself. He he's made some plays at third base that I would not have expected him to make. Um, mm-hmm. it isn't like when um. Wait, which one? The twenty-one draft when um, LSU was really trying to make Jacob Barry a third baseman, and what it, it was tough watching him attempt third base, let alone first base. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it got to the point where he it was so bad that even though he was like a top top three, top five player, they made him a DH strictly. Like they were like, no, Trey yeah. Morgan. Even though you're a sophomore, you're the first baseman, or he might even been a freshman at the time. They had him play first base because you know Barry couldn't. But um, 
No, I, Tommy White has actually been surprising at third base. I don't know if it's something he would stick at long term. Um, but I, second pick, I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it. I think, yeah, and I, I think, I don't know, I don't know about like Tommy White in general, but like if they want to go after someone who profiles as as like specifically as a first baseman and i'm sure i'm sure if they took him with like the comp pick or like the second round pick they'll probably let him try third base like if they're letting malcolm nunez like, play third base in indy they'll let tommy yeah White play third base. yeah so yeah. i mean we'll still see him at third but we'll probably get a quick eye we'll learn quickly if, if it's going to stick or not but like yeah. those kind of profiles i i i, I want to see later in the draft getting taken i don't want to see that with the top top 10 pick like at that at that point if you're looking at someone like who's who is gonna have to come up to the majors and only hit i would rather roll the roll my dice on someone like on like vance honeycutt than than someone who's just gonna strictly be limited to like a first base slash dh thing if you know honeycutt at, at best he might be like a gold at worst he's gonna be still gonna be like a gold glove center fielder kind of thing right I mean, and plus, I, at that point, second, third pick, I might even just go Blake Burke from Tennessee, who's yeah, who's a beast himself. So yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yep. Yeah, so a lot of fun stuff. I, I, I like this time of year. I love, I love like the College World Series and stuff like that. And depending on my plans for the weekend, if they're tickets that aren't crazy, ex- if the tickets aren't crazy expensive, maybe maybe I, I'm only like thirty minutes away from Charlottesville. Maybe I'll ride out there. And- catch a couple of the games and whatnot but um okay so finally for the last segment as we wrap this up we're gonna do run through the weekly preview real quick you got that pulled up all right yeah and i mean i guess since we rambled on a little little uh long it probably um we could probably make this one a little quick just because mm-hmm. it's it should probably be a quick one it just as it is um Indianapolis, uh, they had a three and three week. Um, they're playing Omaha Storm Chasers, Royals farm system. They actually kicked off today um, for Memorial Day. Uh, they won eleven to three. They uh, stomped them. I think I turned the game on in the third inning and it was already nine nothing. <clears throat> um, Tyler Gentry, ninth overall, is the top prospect on that team. Um, but Altoona is where the fun's going to be at this week. It's going to be popping. Um, Altoona's coming off a four and two week, so they they had a big big week, winning four games. They're fourteen and thirty one now, but they're going against the Portland Sea Dogs, uh, Boston Red Sox, Double A team. We got their number one prospect, Marcelo Meyer. Everyone should know that name real well. Um, Roman Anthony, their number two prospect, their number three prospect, Kyle Teal, a personal favorite of Murphy. Their uh, number five prospect, Wilkeman Gonzalez. Their number six prospect, Nick Yorkey, who was a former first round pick. Um, and then on top of that, uh, for people that you know follow this list uh, on a weekly basis, Luis Perales recently got promoted. Uh, if that rings a bell. It's because he just threw five shutout innings with uh, 12 strikeouts against the Grasshoppers. And I think the time he faced the previous outing against the Grasshoppers was four innings. One unearned run in seven Ks. So hopefully uh, Altoona can get revenge against him this week. Um, the Grasshoppers are playing Asheville. Uh, we're, we were just discussing pre-show. We're not sure if they have a stream or not. It doesn't look like it. Like you can you can go you can scroll <laughs> ahead on like the the TV portion of the yeah the M- MILB app and the game isn't listed for tomorrow. So Boo. yeah. Well, it would probably be, it's gonna be it should be a big week for offense because Asheville has the number one offense in OPS, but the eleventh out of twelve in team ERA. Their uh, top prospect is Luis Baez. Uh, he's their second overall uh, prospect on pipeline. Twenty twenty two international free agent of the Dominican Republic. I think it, they said it was one point three million, uh, if I recall correctly. Twenty year old, eight hundred two OPS so far this year. Um, but there's only three other four top 30 prospects by as being the top one. Um, Astros only have one top 100 prospect as it is. Um, then we get down to Bradenton. 
Fort Myers, Mighty Muscles, Twins affiliate. Um, they recently played them uh, about a month ago, I think. Um, you got Charlie Soto and uh, Brandon Winnaker, uh, two prep 2023 20, draft picks. Um, that team itself only has four of the Twins' top 30 with one on the IL, so only three healthy top it's 30 Wal- picks. Walker Jen- Jenkins is the guy on IL, right? Yeah, which um, he's, he's re- been he- – uh, He's been rehab. He, um, I think, was it the t- twins that they played today? The in the complex, I'm pretty sure, or it was either so. today or, or Saturday. But he's he's rehabbing with them, and he's been rehabbing for for <laughs> almost a week down there. So, so they may it's catch probable. Him. Yeah, there is a chance that he ends up uh, playing back in Bray or back with Fort Myers this week. So yeah, so that would be a big boost. Because mm-hmm. as of right now, if, if opposing prospects is your thing, unfortunately, right now it's looking like Double uh, A is the spot to go, and I guess we'll have to see. Uh, I know uh, Solomato came out of the pen the other day. Um, I like the yeah, mm-hmm. and then Bubba's on the IL. They've been. I think I saw lot- somewhere that he he threw like a bullpen session late last week, uh-huh. so. I, I wasn't able to find anyone else to like confirm it or stuff like that, but mm-hmm. but that would be huge to get him back. It'd be a good with the the hitters that they have on on Portland. It could be a good test for the the pitching staff. I think Sean yeah. Sullivan Sean Sullivan should get the double start this week, so he'll start twice. So he should be kicking things off on uh, Tuesday or May, well, I guess, when people are listening. Him and Ashcraft should get promoted, but you know that's another story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 for that's for another day. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm look looking right now. Uh, they they did play today, and he's played one, two, three, four, five games with the FCL team. So mm-hmm. it's possible Jenkins gets bump, bumped up. So that'd be cool. That'd be, that would be cool. That would be cool. He was a. He looks like he's going to be a. He could stay, as long as he stays healthy, so really really good. But um, yeah. So yeah, be an interesting week. Double A definitely be. Might not be pretty, but probably definitely the the series to kind of tune into this 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 week kind of kind of thing. I, I think it's funny that Luis Perales and dominated uh, the Pirates High A team, and now he gets to go out and face the Double A team. Right. So right. Funny how that works out with it. But um, he gets to right, go well, against Seth Beer. I mean, the dude's mashing, and and this show's all been been up all about first baseman, right? Mm-hmm. So. He, he's another first baseman. Yep. Okay. Well, that will pretty much do it for, for the show today. want to thank everyone for tuning in. Nola, for those who uh, aren't watching the video feed to see your, your Twitter handle there, you want to go over your socials real quick? At Nola Jeffy, N-O-L-A-J-E-F-F-Y. And you crossed like 400 followers not too long ago. We need to get now. Now we got to start chipping away to 500. <laughs> we'll <get laughs> might, it might be a minute, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. But uh, as always, follow me on Twitter at double underscore Murphy 88. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Um, I'll have to start putting the link in, in, in the bio of the episodes and, and, and whatnot there. Um, been uploading videos slowly for my trip down in Florida. I have a whole stack of them still to go through. I'm trying to get them all off my phone. Um, subscribe to the website, Bucks on Deck, Substack. Uh, was it? I got a couple feet, a couple features. I got one on uh, Esmeralda Valdez, and I, I think I'm going to do another one on Michael Kennedy. I have another story on Michael Kennedy I want to run. So, you know, subscribe, get access to that subscribe you also get access to our updated um top 25 prospect rankings my video breakdowns when when i do those so lots of fun stuff subscribe and um we will see you guys uh next week all right peace